Um, the speaker today is Zilin Gao, who's a PhD student in, in my research group. And she's going to talk to you today about um, cubic boron nitride doping of magnesium diboride bulks. So Zilin, when you're ready, yeah. um, you, can, you can begin. Okay, so Susie, can you see my screen? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, yeah. yeah, perfect, yeah. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Zin Gao from Alsbad University. Uh, today I feel quite privileged to give this presentation to share some of my PhD study results on MGB2 superconductors. Uh, my topic today is on the roles of cubic boron nitrate dopants on microstructures and superconducting properties of MGB2 bulk samples. Before I go into the results and discussion, so let's warm up first. I will give a brief background introduction about my project and some reasons we choose MGB2 as our study object. Then I will uh, introduce two processing methods we use to prepare bulk samples. Subsequently, uh, let's look at, uh, we will look at some results and discuss, and discuss how we can explain these results. Finally, four takeaway points will be given in conclusions. So let me show you some ideas about magnetic drug targeting first. Uh, it's usually used in biomedical uh, application, and this is also our motivation to investigate both superconductors. As you may heard before, M MDT is a novel treatment to silver disease like cancer. Generally speaking, we, um, we put drug and magnetic nanoparticles into polymer shells, and then we apply external magnets to steer magnetic nanoparticles to the right place in the human body. So the drugs can be released at a fixed location. This treatment has high localization accuracy, so it's quite, prom uh, it's quite promising. Now you may think that to, uh, to have the strongest magnetic force on nanoparticles, we need to, uh, to make sure that all external magnets can generate highest magnetic field in the, spa in the space. So that's where we start. Among all kinds of candidates, we choose superconductors. And, uh, and why we choose MGB2 superconductors? Well, in conventional superconductors, MGB2 has the highest, uh, has the highest transition temperature and it can, compared with high temperature superconductors, it, it can be processed by um, powder processing. So, it, it, so it's quite cheap and it's quite easy to produce. So these are two images uh, we produce in our lab and in the E6 company by hot pressing uh, and by field assisted sintering. So after we uh, make sure, uh, so uh, after we know why we start and which material we choose, then it's time to think about what should we go uh, do to get best superconducting properties. Here, I summarize some, summarize some important factors we need to consider. You can see in the middle, it is microstructures, right? Um, and it links the so superconducting properties as well as processing conditions such like a bridge. To get the best magnetic field, which we call trapped field, we need to make sure that the critical current can flow through the whole samples. So we call it macro GC. To achieve best macro GC, we need to make sure that a high critical current can be generated within the small regions, which we call macro GC. And between different regions, there is good connectivity. Uh, so uh, to, uh, our, uh, our method to improve macro GC is to introduce pinning centers into our bulk samples. So we choose cubic boron nitride. And to make sure that we have uh, good connectivities inside our samples, we use a uh, fast sintering to improve the bulk density and shorten the sintering time. This means less impurities can be generated during sintering. Um, 
So these slides show you the two methods we used uh, in, prepar uh, in, prepar uh, in preparing the book samples. Uh, the first is high energy ball meeting. The second is field assisted centering. So in high energy ball meeting, we change uh, the meeting time from zero to 24 hours, as well as cubic boron nit uh, nitride percentage from zero to five weight percentage. In field centering, uh, we, uh, we change different, uh, we change centering temperature as well as the centering time to see how these conditions can affect the microstructures and superconducting properties of our samples. Now it's time to look at some uh, results. We first check how many feces exist in milk, in milk powders. So in end of samples, they are MGB4 and MGO, which are uh, products of MGB2 decomposition. If we dope cubic boron nitride in the initial powders, we can also find cubic, uh, cubic boron nitride peaks in XRD patterns. Um, the enlarged pictures show changes of two peaks, which are 002 and 110 of MGB2. So 002 shows how C axis changes, and zero and 110 shows how C uh, how uh, how A axis changes. We can see that uh, with increasing meaning time, the peak will shift left. This means uh, the uh, quit, uh, this means that both A and C axes will be increased with increasing meaning time. And the peak intensity is lower. Uh, the peak width is also broader with, uh, uh, when, we, when we mute our powder uh, longer. Uh, if we compare uh, the same trend also found in the five weight percentage cubic boron nitride dop doped powders, but here we compare the difference of these two groups. You can see that um, if we dope cubic boron nitride in the powders, the, in, uh, the increase of C and A axis will, a slight, will be slightly higher. Um, if we plot intensity vs milling time, we could find at the initial stage of milling, if we dope cubic boron nitride into powders, some part of uh, the, uh, the MGB2 green, uh, the MGB2 size will decrease dramatically. This means cubic boron nitride is effective to be grinding aids. SEM characterization of end of MGB2 powders shows the large MGB2 particles with angular shape becomes acquiesced and a long meaning time. If we found that if we uh, check carefully of these loosely packed agglomerates, we can find there are some dense regions inside. So if we ball meal or powders, these dense regions will survive at last, but these loosely, uh, loosely packed regions will break into pieces. If we dope boron nitride inside powders, we can find not only the particles of MGB2 will be introduced uh, uh, in size, but also the boron nitride particles uh, will also, um, size will also be minimized. Uh, boron nitride, sample, uh, boron nitride uh, uh, particles in ES images is, is a dark, shows the darkest contrast here. Uh, after sintering under different uh, conditions, the books are categorized by XRD first. I put the details of each sample's processing conditions here and only keep special condition to name different samples. You can see that MGB2 uh, uh, peaks are apparent here in two weight percentage boron nitride double samples sintered uh, milled for 12 hours. However, a new phase, MJNB9 phase, uh, forms in, inside these samples if we sintered it for, uh, for longer time, which is 30 minutes. Uh, since MGB4 phases and MG, uh, MJNB9 phases peaks mainly accumulate in this range, so we zoom in and check the details. Uh, this slide showed that uh, with longer sintering time, as well as larger cubic boron nitride percentage, some 
MGB4 peaks will transform to the MJNB9 phase uh, nine peaks. And if you check these three peaks carefully, we find that this three peak belongs to the magnesium peaks. So this means the MGB2 can react with cubic boronitride to form magnesium and magnesium nitride uh, mag, um, and, and MGNB9 inside our samples. Uh, SEM images show the microstructure's involution. Uh, the end of the MGB2 sample is homogeneous and consists a large amount of MGB4 phases. The addition of boronitride can destroy these microstructures and a lot of islands like dense regions forms. You, you can see from this peak, uh, uh, from this peak, uh, from this figure, sorry. So this is dense regions, uh, which is sur surrounded by the porous, by the porous matrix. Here we see that with longer meeting, as well as a higher percentage of boron nitride, this morphology will become more obvious. If we zoom in, we can examine the details of islands like MGB2 dense regions. So let's look at the end of MGB2 first. As we mentioned before, you see this sample is homogeneous and this is large MGB4 phases. So if we doped boron nitride in and the um, and bomb the powders, then we can find some, some pores formed inside the matrix. So these are the porous region and these are the dense regions. If we increase the meaning time, then the dense regions, the difference between dense regions and the porous regions will become more apparent. How about we increase the cubic boron nitrate percentage? We found that if we doped five bit percentage of boron nitrate, uh, the gaps between the MGB2 grains inside the dense regions can be found. So this gap is detrimental to the GC properties because we know the critical current is hard to, uh, to transport across the green boundaries. If we lower the sintering time, we can see the bulk density decrease. And as the blue arrows shows, if we uh, increase the sintering time, we found the difference. We found the difference in contrast of porous regions and dense regions um, uh, are minimized. This means the green growth happens in the porous regions uh, if we if we increase the sintering time. Uh, here are the EDX analysis and EBSD analysis. So we can see that nitrogen not only exists in the boron nitride particles, but also in the matrix. We can see that there are nitrogen, uh, there are nitrogen distribution, but due to the resolution limit, uh, uh, but due to the limited resolution, we couldn't check the different contrast between the uh, nitrogen containing phases and MG, MGB2 grains. Uh, in the EBSD analysis for book samples, we found that uh, uh, we found that the small um, boron nitride grains uh, with a size below microns uh, exist outside the dense regions. Uh, so the color so show uh, showing uh, show with um, um, showing this color in the face maps to improve the resolution. Uh, uh, because we know that the resolution of SEM is limited by the interact volume of electron beam and the specimen. So we made a thin for use to improve the resolution. And now we can see, uh, see some results. Uh, EDX analysis, uh, uh, this shows nitrogen distribution in 5 to percentage of nitrate uh, centered for five minutes. We see that isolated nitrogen containing phases outside, outside the MGB2 dense phases. And in the line scan, we can see that the uh, nitrogen fluctuation, uh, we can see the nitrogen fluctuations inside the, these phases. So we call it MGNB phases rather than MGNB9. Uh, if we increase the sintering time, we found that MGB. M MGMB face, uh, grains growth and form a network surrounding the MGB2 grains. Um, actually, this is also detrimental to the GC properties because 
if we if we if we imagine uh, this area which uh, which is the generation of GC uh, which uh, which is uh, if if GC um, transport from this side to this side because the bar because this barrier it it will impair the GC uh, GC current significantly. Uh, we also did the TKD analysis on our thin foils. We can see some MG NB non-grains has been detected successfully. However, these points which show the black regions cannot be indexed. Uh, we suppose this is because the nitrogen fluctuations inside these regions or uh, the, the greens inside these dark regions is too small to be uh, too small to be categorized even in TKD analysis. Up to now, we can summarize two rows of foreign nitride dopants. One is because one is the effective grinding uh, grade uh, grinding A's uh, in uh, in ball milling, and the other is a reactant uh, of small is a react is to provide reaction of small uh, cubic boron nitride and MgB2 inside the bulk samples. So I will first explain why it can be effective grinding A's. Uh, here I introduce two uh, mechanisms of crack generation. We know that MgB4 exists in the MgB2 particles. And we also found that MgB4 grains also accompanied with a lot of pus. So we can imagine that if the milling balls hits our MgB2 particles, so MgB4 uh, four phases will are prone to generate cracks and therefore uh, accelerating the uh, grain refinement. Uh, and hard uh, cubic boron nitride uh, can be uh, can um, can be embedded into the MgB2 particles. Therefore, uh, therefore, you can see that cra uh, cracks can also generate it between the interface of cubic boron nitride and MgB2 particles. Therefore, that's the reason why this, uh, this addition can be effective grinding aids. If we centered our green compact at 1200 uh, degrees, we can find that uh, the large cubic boron nitride keeps its original uh, chemical composition but the small cubic boron nitride will be transformed to the MJNB uh, MGB, MGB phases as we, as we uh, observed in the SEM images and EBSD images before. Uh, last but not least, let's look at some uh, superconducting results from PPMS measurement. We can saw a decrease of TC, which may be due to the crystal structure distortion brought by ball milling. Because you can see that with longer milling time, the decrease will become obvious. In addition, due to the low density at low centering temperature, the sample, this sample, which, uh, which is green curves, shows the broader transition wise. If we look at the GC properties mirrored at 20 Kelvin, uh, we can see that uh, the, uh, we can see that uh, this uh, the black curves are uh, as as end of MGB two samples. Uh, if we centered at low temperature, uh, the connectivity at low magnetic field is quite is quite poor. Uh, if we drop cubic boron nitride inside, um, we found that uh, with uh, with increasing milling time and increasing uh, cubic boron nitride percentage, GC, will, GC curve will shift upwards. So for, for example, for this curve, as we, as we know that the MGNB9 uh, networks form inside the matrix, which will be a barrier for GC, trans, uh, for GC current across the different greens. So that's the reason why, why this samples uh, superconducting uh, super, uh, super performance is not as good as uh, as other samples. Um, so now let's go to the conclusion part. I make I'm summarize four takeaway points. The first, hard cubic boron nitride can act as effective grinding aids. 
um, in the bomb in the bomb meaning process and is uh, can also be the reactant to form MG and B phases in porous regions. Uh, and we also know that large boron nitrate particles maintain their chemical compositions, while small boron nitrate particles below one microns can be transformed into Mg and B phases. After bo boron nitrate addition and high energy bomb meaning, islands like MgB2 uh, look, uh, to can be formed and is located in the porous matrix to uh, uh, matrix in the bulk samples. If we doped five weight percentage cubic boron nitrate and mill the powder longer than 24 hours, gaps between MgB2 grains will occur. Uh, finally, green, a critical current path is quite important, is quite critical to improve GC properties of MgB2 bulk samples, because we see that a large amount of MgB, M, Mg and B phases between MgB2 grains will act as barriers, uh, inhibiting the uh, GC inhibiting GC current uh, inhibiting critical current flow through the whole samples. So that's all I talk. Uh, that's all the content I will talk today. Thank you so much. Any questions? <laughs>